Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter, the master of hoppers. Today checking out some more Czech Pilsner from Vinoradsky People Bar in the Czech Republic. I actually got this can here as an extra on Kurt webshop, the webshop that's run by the Belkis Kahoots, a Danish import company. It's because I was a mishap with an order I made because I wanted to check out some new beers from uh, OO Brewing, which I reviewed already on the channel, which are awesome beers. And, and then I wanted to try, what, what I, they made a mishap with some Vit beer I actually ordered because I wanted to revisit some Vit beer and also whatever. That was just a mishap with the order. So they sent me a replacement beer, which was Veratska 11, but they also sent me this one, which is Svatovaklavska. Hard name to produce or pronounce. And uh, yeah, Vinoratska or Vinoratsky makes fantastic Czech Pilsners. They kind of helped change my mind a bit towards Czech Pilsner really because I've always been under the mindset that I always prefer German the most because they don't have that buttery note that's kind of become somewhat of, you know, a thing that's known in Czech Pilsners mainly because of a beer like Pilsner Urkel that has a hint of that buttery diacetyl note. And there is that in some, you know, other mass produced examples like uh, Budva, I think, has a little bit maybe too. And, you know, there's a, quite a few, but the most iconic one that's known for it is Pilsner Urkel. So, therefore, I've always been into German uh, Pilsners, but also because the German Pilsners I've had, and I've explored that more as well, has always been ones with like big fruity hop profiles from, from like awesome, like the German hops like Bittelfuhr or Saphir or uh, Spalz and, and things like that. And some classic hops that give some more fruitiness. But they, these guys really opened my eyes for, for Czech, Czech Pils and I really want to drink more, but it's, again, like German beer, I know a lot of breweries now that makes awesome German Pilsners, so it's kind of new to me with the Czechs, so I just need to try and explore, I think. And if you guys have rec recommendations, please leave them below, uh, so we can try some more awesome Czech Pilsners, because as you guys know, I love great Pilsners. So yeah, Vinorodsky making some fantastic stuff, the 11 and 12, especially the 11, was just marvelous. Again, like just a really nice crazy dry, well not crazy, but quite dry pills that was very snappy and like just like with a classic sauce profile. So this here, the Svatova Klavska, it's actually called Svatova Klavska 13, I think, and I'm probably butchering that. <laughs> but this is a wet hop beer. So kind of like you also do in Germany towards the end of the season when the hops are, are, are ready to be harvested, a lot of brewers and whatnot do wet hop beers. Uh, Grünhopf beer, I think you call it in German. And they do that in Pilsners, Bach beers, whatever. I think I've reviewed one from Vitova, which was really good. Uh, uh, and um, this is the same concept. You use the whole fresh cone hops. And that's also what's being done in the States with a lot of IPAs and whatnot at the moment, or I guess it's a few months back. But this is made with fresh sas hops. And then of course, malted barley and water and yeast. And this is an unfiltered and unpasteurized Pilsner on 4.9% Czech Pilsner in that, as I said. So yeah, I think it's really cool. There's even a canning date. This is super fresh, man. This was canned on the 7th of October and tomorrow is the 1st of November. That is crazy fresh pills. My saliva started going nuts just knowing that it was that fresh, but it's also smelled really good from here. So yeah, let's check this one out. So yeah, and thanks to Kurvia for sending this as an extra. This looks very, oh man, I can smell that fresh sauce hop already. So. This looks great in the glass. It's got this almost like Kellerbier type look. It, it's a lightly hazy golden yellow uh, color. It, it looks beautiful in the glass and a nice frothy white head. It really, it almost, you know, it, I just think Kellerbier, you know, when I see this. I wonder if it's a similar deal where it's uh, tapped really young. Like again, I really need to read up and check, you know, lager styles because it's not something I really dive, you know, dove that much into compared to German, just because I've been there so many times and, and whatnot, so that's also part of it. Maybe I need to go to the Czech Republic one day. Uh, but yeah, it, it looks beautiful in the glass. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Let's check out the aroma. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> really fruity hop character. It's, the, the fun thing with wet hops, you get more fruitiness out of the hop and it's almost like a juiciness. It's not the same as in like New England IPAs and whatnot, but it's like, think of your classic dried pellet hopped beers uh, or just dried hop co whole cone hop beers. They have more of a dry fruit sensation or spice or whatever. This is fresh, like almost like it's like fresh peppercorn and fresh floral nuances, even citrus. And like the citrus and floral vibes in this is not something I usually contribute to size that much, especially the citrus. 
but there's a decent amount of it. And like crazily nice freshly baked breadiness to it as well. Yeah, like this really nice crackery breadiness. I think though, maybe in this one there is a hint of a butterscotchy flavor, but it's so little that it's just, there's just something that reminds me of brioche. And that could be breadiness, but it's just like, it's this like slightly buttered bready flavor. And to me that's often, you know, because of the, maybe a slight hint of diacetyl, but when it's this low, it smells awesome. Like usually I hate diacetyl, but when it's combined with this kind of breadiness in it, you know, it, it smells quite nice because it smells like brioche. And it could also just be the malt profile, really. It's not necessarily, you know, it's not necessary that it is actual diacetyl, which is this buttery compound in beers. So yeah, buttery brioche and like, like just light amounts of that, like really nice peppery, again, fresh peppercorn, but also like black peppercorn. Yeah, and floral notes, grassy, quite grassy too. It smells really, really, really awesome. The fun thing is like when you see ratings of this, like I've talked about it so many times, not maybe specifically this beer, but log a lot of lagers. So many people say they're boring with their craft lagers and, and stuff like this. It's like, oh, boring 275. It's just like, you really just need to get off drinking crazy overhopped and crazy adjuncted uh, stumps, sours, whatever. And just try and leave those styles alone for a bit and just drink loads of lager. And then you'll start to get into it and you'll see how different it is. Because again, this is all about subtle, soft, complex nuances. And beer you can drink a ton of. It's not about like in your face. It smells dope. Let's try it. Cheers. Man, that is Dope shit. Oh, that's really good. It really reminds me of the 11, but with much more of a fruity hop character. Fuck, that's good. Oh man, I want to drink liters of this. That buttery brioche thing, it's even lighter on the flavor. It's maybe more of just a very nice, soft, fluffy breadiness from the malt. Um, maybe a little bit. Aftertaste is very nice. Quite dry, really classic sauce, like just like really really peppery, black pepper, white pepper, and up front with the fruitiness. There's almost like that green peppercorn thing because it's like citrusy fruity kind of like. So if you've ever tried green fresh peppercorns, they can have a little bit of a slight citrus flair. Maybe not as much as something like a citron peppercorn, which is also numbing. This is by no means numbing or anything, but it's just like it reminds me of fresh green peppercorns. And then like a floral edge and a little bit of a, like a, just lemon, like lemon juiciness, maybe a little bit of a pithiness to it as well. What a beautiful beer. Also grassiness. Man, that peppery aftertaste and dry bitterness. It's not like crazy bitter. I wonder how many I've used it is. It doesn't say, but I wouldn't imagine it's more like, it's also got low on the bitterness scale but I'd imagine it'd be around the 30 or so mark. It's like, cause it doesn't feel crazy bitter, but there's a substantial bitterness and dryness in the back end, which is really nice. It just makes you want to crush this beer. Like it has more fruitiness, which I really like. And is what I really, really want in, in, in lagers. I want that combination of lots of fresh fruitiness from like more fruity hops. And then like a nice substantial dry, bitter, slightly often spicy, uh, quite herby uh, aftertaste. Uh, and that's like pretty much the perfect kind of pilsner for me. The might, malt backbone should definitely be there to give it a nice like body, but it doesn't have to be really overpowering. That's usually how I prefer my lagers. And this to some extent hits a lot of that. Like it has some of that fruitiness. It has a lot of that dry spiciness on the aftertaste and then loads of like uh, some brightness to, to, to hold everything up. And then a fairly fluffy mouthfeel and fairly full for 4.9% beer as well. Very slick. There's almost like there's, just there for a sec, there's like a almost slightly soapy flavor. I, uh, like it's like a f intense floral flavor, really, I think. And often so that kind of flavor, you can think of soapiness in hops. And I think I've had that a few times in, in some kind of lagers, but it's just a, a, a soft touch. Um, yeah, this is really, really good. I don't think it's world-class for me. Again, I just wanted a little bit more fruitiness to be really, really excited about it, but I would score this around the same level as the 11, so like a 93, 
maybe even a small 94 actually because it just has a little more fruity fruitiness in that one but this is awesome this is a great seasonal pilsner again this is something that is made for the hop growing or the hop harvesting season so it's towards the fall you can get these kind of beers uh, only but yeah fantastic stuff you guys need to dive into some Vinohatsky uh, POR because it's just dope classic brewed Czech pills and again they also do some modern stuff so yeah Fantastic. If you guys had a chance to try Vinorotsky Pivovar's Svatovaklavska 13 Wet Hot Sass Pilsner, let me know if you thought of it. Really, really good stuff. Thanks to Tonto Crude for sending this one as an extra as well. And uh, as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm going to say cheers. See you guys in another video.